Hi guys, I'm going to be off on holiday for a little while, only a short break, but it means there's a few projects that I'm in the middle of that will be delayed. You may not notice, depends how I schedule them on the uh, computer or on YouTube. But this one I started today, just bought it and tried flying it straight away. Surge foam plane for outdoor use. It cost me three pounds at the works. It didn't fly very well, just trying it as a glider. But my plan is to put one of those WL Toys little receiver packs that has the two servos on board and see if we can just control the ailerons with it. Uh, no rudder or elevator control, just try the ailerons and just see what happens. That bit of weight on there was because it's got a twist in the tail and it was turning right all the time. I didn't have anything to cut these out or the rudder while we were out so I just tried trimming it with a bit of weight. Anyway, all I'm trying to do at the moment is see if we can get the cockpit open because that will be the logical place to put the battery um, well, the battery actually, because we don't need space for the receiver, because the receiver's going to have to sit in here somewhere. We're going to have to cut a bit of a slot, slide it in there, so that we can have the levers, levers, push rods coming out to control the elevators, ailerons. In fact, I might, yeah, I'm not quite sure how big I'll make them. I might even just add them on the back. That might be the easiest thing. Just external ailerons. Anyway, I'll see if I can get this off. It's not coming off immediately, but it also doesn't feel like there's too much glue in there. Right, that seems to have come out with a bit of leverage. Yeah, just a little bit of glue there and a little bit of glue there. And that looks like a couple of ball bearings in there for weight. So I think if we take them out, that should allow us to put the battery in there. And the receiver uh, unit there, more or less on the centre of gravity. Yeah, it might work. Right, this is the receiver unit I want to use. So WL Toys V911. 2.4 gigahertz. I've used a couple before on some of my other projects. To be honest, not terribly successfully. Nothing wrong with the receiver unit, just my projects weren't particularly successful. One of them was one of those Poundland foam gliders, and the other was a little flying wing. I think the only problem with the flying wing was I was underpowering it. Right, question is, which way round does it go? And what's going to be the best way to fit it in there? Going to have to have it fairly, fairly far forwards, I think, just so we've got a bit of an angle there for our Elevons, elevons, ailerons, whatever. Always a discussion as to what you should call them. And do I cut right in there to fit them? Because obviously that will weaken it a bit. Yeah, I think on top would be better than on the bottom. So I'll cut a slot out there. Stick that in there. Could always stick a bit of bamboo skewer or something across it to strengthen it again where we've weakened it. 
and this is the one that's got a bit of a bent tail so it'd be nice to straighten that up somehow but I'm not quite sure the best way to do that short of strapping a couple of bits of carbon fibre rod on it either side to straighten it up could just shove a bamboo skewer all the way up the middle that's probably just as likely to curve it because half those bamboo skewers are curved anyway. Or we could just cut the rudder out and twist it to trim it the other way. Right, we'll have a look at that. I've just used my soldering iron to hollow out a little bit of a hole there just so we can sink the receiver in there. You have to make space underneath for the uh, little cordless motors to stick out. So I'm going to stick that in there. I'll glue it in to hold it still. And then I'll need to cut some slots out the side of the fuselage so we can slide it in place. I was thinking of melting the holes out but I think I can do it more accurately with a knife because once that foam starts melting it goes quite quickly. This is just the slot so that the servos can slide through sitting on top of the wings. I think we're just at the stage now where that hole is big enough for that to slide through. So I'll glue the receiver in place, slide that through, we might as well glue the wing in place then. Uh, oh I need to put a battery lead on there, mustn't forget that. Ah, that could be a problem. Although it needn't be, we can just let it come out the side here, along there, and then we'll stick the battery under here. I think I weighed those at about 11 grams in total. And the plane itself, uh, I wrote down there, 52 grams. I don't know if you can see that. 52 grams before we've done anything to it. It will be a bit heavier when we've finished. Obviously, because we're adding that, we're taking out a very tiny amount of foam, but not much. We'll take those out, but we're gonna add, I'm gonna add ailerons straight on the back. I'm not gonna cut those ones out. I'm just gonna add some little uh, 1 16th um, millimeter balsa ailerons. Remember to solder my power leads on there. So now I'll put some, I think I'll use silicon sealant to sit it down into the gap and hold it steady. Might just push that aerial sort of that direction. Just setting up my controls using my Fly Sky. Uh, what's this one? The FS T6. So I'm setting up dual rates and setting it up for Elevon um, and rudder. <laughs> So, at the moment I've got it on 50% uh, rate and minus 70% expo, so very little movement. And I have to move the stick a long way, because I always tend to over control things, so I'm setting that up very minimal. 
and then in sports mode <laughs> we've got the full range you might notice I've got that servo arm pointing up slightly that's where I want it that one I'll have to move around a little bit as well because the push rods are going to go out at a bit of an angle I think that's what I need to do until I get the fuselage in place I don't know how much space I've got to play with anyway that's that setting that's more or less the same setting uh, that I had for my uh, where are we? No, nope, don't want that. Okay, system. Model select. I'll set this one up as the works. And it's very similar to my Bobarek fighter. Now, I think Bobarek, I can't remember what it means. I think that's make one or something. I don't speak the language myself. But it's a model fighter that uses aileron control. What else have we got there? Go back the other way. Little glider wing. Fly Sky 01. Yeah. Okay, so the works. That's what we've got set up. And I'm hoping I can get away with this tiny little battery. Because I think that's all I need to power those two little servos. If I decide I want to put a motor on it as well, then there are motor outputs on this uh, board. Although now that I've glued it in place, I'll probably melt a hole in the wing when I try and solder the motor leads on. But then I'll probably put a bigger battery on it. But we'll try it just like this as a glider first. Right, so that's glued in place. I've had a change of mind about the battery. I'm going to try one of these, which is one of those ones from the Poundland power pods for recharging your batteries. It says 650 milliamp hour. It's a metal case which makes it a bit heavier than I really want, but it's a convenient battery to use. I put the same connector on it that we've got on there. So we should be all right. I was just thinking it's nice and thin and I can melt a slot in the fuselage to sit that in. Got a bit of balsa here that we'll make the ailerons from. It's just a scrap piece. So for those people who like dimensions, I should think that's going to be about 150. Oh, pen doesn't work. Okay. Just a bit. So how big will I make it? Shall I make it that big? That's going to be enormous. I reckon two, two centimetres, I reckon. And then I'll just hold them in place with tape. Uh, 
Uh, got some pretty coloured duct tape I might use. Yeah, I'll cut them out, one on each side. Then we'll have to find something to use as the um, control horns. Before I fit the elevators, it'd probably be a good idea to slide the wing into place. So I'll do that now. Right, you can see a bit clearer where those servos go. Battery in place. I've made it so I can slide it forwards a bit. If I want to adjust the centre of gravity. In fact, I could probably extend that hole even further, but we'll give it a try first. See what it's like. So that should fit in there okay. And then we should be able to tuck the excess down in there or at the other end, depending on which way we want the battery to sit. Backwards. So. Obviously. Elevator horns next. Elevator or aileron horns. Control horns. I've used yellow duct tape on the top and clear plastic on the bottom. Still haven't done anything about that tail twisting to one side. Let's see how we go. If we end up terribly nose heavy then I'll shove a bamboo skewer up the inside of that to try and straighten it up. But if we're tail heavy I don't want to add anything to the back there. We might just have to cut the rudder and tilt it over to counteract the twist. I expect I could just store it like that for a few months and it might take on the turn. Okay, switch you off again. Unplug the battery in there before we forget about it. Quite pleased with that. As I say, it is a bit heavier than I had in mind. And I've still got the small battery to go in there if we really find we've got problems with weight. Right, I have rushed this a bit because we're due to go on holiday in a couple of days time. I just wanted to see if I could actually get it together uh, in time. Uh, I've just weighed it. It was 52 grams before we started. It's now 75 grams, so that's 50% heavier. But we have increased the wing area in effect by sticking these great big ailerons on it. Uh, So, I'll give it a little throw across the garden just to see what happens. Centre of gravity at the moment is actually not far off what it was before we started. Just a little bit forwards I would think. I've got the battery pushed right back at the moment. If I do try and fly this in some sort of wind, then we might actually want to move it forwards to give us some chance of penetrating the wind. But I still haven't sorted out that tail that twists off that way. Uh, well, I'll just throw it across the garden. Um, 
I'll leave it exactly as it is at the moment. probably saw it still wanted to go to the right so I'll see if I can give it a bit of left trim Right, I've got it set up on the least uh, movement at the moment, so we haven't got very much up and down. But I can always whip these off and move them down a few holes if I feel I need more control. My plan is to try this on a bit of a slope somewhere, but it's very tempting to stick a hook underneath it and bungee launch it. That could be quite fun, but it's a very quick build using that WL Toys, was it V911? receiver that has the servos on it and, well at least we've got the simple controls in place the other thing I did mention when I was putting it together was you've got motor outputs on that receiver board so I could stick a pod on top and have a little motor on it to push it along that would save throwing it because that would add more weight again so we've already increased the weight by 50% uh, we've gone from 52 grams up to 75 grams so that's added quite a bit of weight there I am very tempted to increase those throws on there or move the um, push rods down to the lower holes because I've got two settings on here I've got the half rate and full rate you can't really see any difference on there Well, we'll see. We'll give it a go sometime. I don't know if I'll be able to take it on holiday because the car's going to be pretty full. So, that'll do for now. Um, I don't know if I actually covered it off because I jumped a bit there because I've been doing this uh, bits and pieces between other things. It's balsa elevate, uh, elevators, ailerons I've put on there. Just 16th balsa. 
Um, I sprayed it with um, varnish. Gave it several coats of varnish first. And then I've used yellow duct tape for the hinge. Uh, the bottom is clear tape. And then the control horns are just plywood that go right the way through so they're glued top and bottom and at the moment that does seem to be working so we will see oh and that battery is a lipo battery out of a poundland power pod for charging your mobile phones I just whipped it out put a suitable connector on it so we can connect it up to the lead I put on the receiver and as I say, I've made it so we can slide it backwards and forwards might have to put something in there to hold it in place actually because that's slipped forwards a bit since I started that'll do for now hey thanks for watching there's plenty of videos on my main channel with more added daily so don't forget to subscribe and enable the notifications to keep you up to date with my new releases you can help keep my channel running by donating a dollar on patreon to buy me coffee you can always find more information in the video description thanks again for watching